a relation is a set of ordered pairs. Examples: 0.19, 211, 313, 415. Can also be represented graphically if we had it on a graph. And an equation can often be used to represent a very large set of ordered pairs, like the line y equals 2x plus 7, which these points are on that line, but every point in between, every decimal, every fraction combination would also be part of that relation. Now, a function is a special type of relation. A function is a special type of relation in which the x value is not repeated. No, which means no two ordered pairs can sh share the same x-coordinate. There is no two points that are above one another. To test this, we can do a vertical line test. to see if a relation is not a function. So if I look below, I have this circle. If I were to draw a straight line anywhere along it, and out of all of them, is there any point where there's two y values for one x value? And being a circle, there's a lot of them. So because of that, this is not a function, but it is still a relation. Two other things that we can look at and we're going to add just as an idea is the domain and the range. The domain represents all possible x values. So what could x be? Anything that x could be. So for a circle, x could be anywhere along here or along there but for this specific relation x can't be if each block is worth one minus seven minus six and a half minus twelve plus ten it could be plus four it would just be up here or down here it could be zero x could be worth zero because then we'd have an answer for y so the domain represents all the possible x values. And when we write it, we're going to see there's a special notation for it. The range then represents all the possible y values. So if we look at our circle again, the highest we could get is 6, the lowest we could get is negative 6, and everything in between. Now to think about it in order, when we graph points, we go out on the x-axis first, domain, and then we go up the y-axis, range. D comes before R in the English language. So, for each of these six examples, we're going to determine if they are a function and then state the domain and range. So, a set of points. For a set of points, I'm looking, is there any doubles in the x values? 3, 5, negative 4, 7. There is no doubles, that should have a bracket, to be a point. There are no doubles in the x values, so yes, it is a function. For the domain, I'm going to write the letter D to state that this is my domain. I can write an equal sign. And for this specifically, the only possible values that x can be are 3, 5, negative 4, and 7. So I use these squiggly brackets for domain and range. And I want to put these number in ascending order, meaning from lowest to highest. And I close it off. So the only possible values of x in this set, negative 4, 3, 5, and 7. Similarly, for range, when it's a set of points, I'm just looking at what are the actual range, what could y be. Even though there's a duplicate, they aren't over top of one another, so that's fine. I don't have to show it twice. So I have 1, 5, 6, and 1. So in order, 1, 5, and 6. 
So stated whether it's a function, domain, and range. We look at a circle. Again, to check now that I have something on the graph, I look at any point, are there any two y values that are over top with the same x? There is. So it is not a function. domain and range, we're going to write it a little bit different. The domain is going to be the lowest it can get is negative 6, because that's the furthest it can go at on the x-axis. The highest it can get is positive 6, and it can be anything in between, including 6, and including negative 6. So while we would think that we can cap it off, even though we've used our less than and equal to and greater than and equal to signs, we still want to say that x can be a sum or the x is the sum or any real number in between. And then we close it off. So this is just saying that x can be anything in between, including any decimal or fraction along the way because that line is unbroken. We can do the same thing for range. We look at the lowest that it can get, negative 6, except now we're talking about y, the y values, and the highest it can get is positive 6. Again, where y is any real number in between. We could put this at the start, that's fine, same notation, same idea. I'm going to show you the other way here. I look at a parabola. And if I add the arrows and say it goes on forever, vertical line test, it passes. No two points are above one another because it is continually opening, so it'll never go straight up. Because of that, yes, this is a function. This is a quadratic function, the words we've been using. For the domain, we think about x it's going to keep opening up, which means it's going to keep going to the right forever, eventually. To get way out here at plus 20, it's going to be maybe way up off our sheet, but it does go on forever, which means it keeps opening up to the right. It keeps opening up to the left. So the number that might represent all the numbers all the way to the left or negative, and all the numbers all the way to the right, is infinity and negative infinity. And it goes on forever. So because of that, we can actually say that x is a sum of all the real numbers. x can be anything because it goes on forever and forever. For range, we think the same sort of thing except there is a minimum because it opens down. And our minimum here is 4, negative 4. So if I were to put y as a set of all real numbers such that y is greater than negative 4. I can close that off or I could add infinity but this open-ended is fine. So if you wanted to add less than infinity to show that it goes on forever, that's fine. If you don't, don't worry about it. That's why I put it in dotted line. Okay, let's do three more. Again, a set of points. I look, I'm looking for x values, 0, 3, 2, 0, negative 3. Oh, I said 0 twice, which means 0, 4 and 0, 5 are above one another, so not a function. We can still graph these. These are still points, but it is not a function. Again, domain, it's a set of points, so I need 0, 2, 3, and negative 3 in order. For range, specifically, it can only be 4, negative 9, 4, 5, or 9. So in order, negative 9, 4, 5, 9, close it off. Example E is a combination of a whole bunch of things. It goes on forever to the left, forever to the right. And so we see all of a sudden that if we were to do vertical line test, 
according to what we can see, yes, it's a function. Domain, what goes on forever to the left, forever to the right. So it's every single possibility or every real number. The range, if, and we can't really tell, but if we say that that eventually goes straight, which it's supposed to be if we were zooming in, it would be at negative six, and we got positive six. So even though it might be at say one at three different spots, we're still looking at what are the possible y values. And the lowest it can go is negative six. And I know this because I made it. So if you're thinking that it actually gets close to an asymptote because you've heard that before or you're in grade 11, no, I've made it curve into a straight line. The highest it gets, positive six. And again, where y is any number in between. For F, vertical line test, all of a sudden we actually have a vertical line, which means when X is 4, Y is every one of these points. So it is not a function. We think that it goes on forever in both directions. It's going to go all the way to the left, all the way to the right. So our domain, nice and easy, is a set of all real numbers. And based on that slope, it is continuing to decrease or go down. And on that end, it's continuing to increase and go up. So our range is also going to hit every single possibility for y. Now, there are other ways that we can communicate domain and range using square brackets and round brackets. But that starts to confuse us and look like actual points. So we're not going to teach that right now. You do review it next year, and I believe it is included there. But we just want to know this from when we start using quadratics and graphing them.